If you could only pick one, D5 render or twin motion, which would it be? What's going on team? My name's David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today I want to settle the debate. I'm going to take a deep dive into D5 render and compare it head to head with twin motion, a software I genuinely love and have used for years to see which one is the better software for architects and designers around the world. Are you ready? Let's go. So to start the video, let's compare the pair. Twin motion against D5 render. We're gonna be using this ArcCAD project in front of us as our base model. So twin motion right now, I'm running twin motion 25.1.1, the latest, the greatest. And D5, I'm running 2.1. Both of these are obviously running on a Windows PC because only twin motion is available on Mac right now. But I do have inside word that D5 is coming to Mac soon enough. So hopefully that comes in the very near future. Our import process in both super simple, import direct link, find our file and hit import into InMotion. Then all we have to do is go into ArcCAD, sync it, give it a few seconds and the model populates. Now, the first thing you'll notice is obviously there's a starting base, which we need to turn off and our starting ground is too high. So we need to adjust that lower. And that's all we need to do for TwinMotion. For D5 render, it's even easier. Instead of going into D5 directly, we just come into ArcCAD, hit the sync with D5, jump back into D5 and in seconds, the model is loaded. Now, just like in twin motion, it loads a little bit low. So we do need to adjust it, bring it up to where it needs to be. And there we go. We have both of our models automatically imported. So on first glance, D5 produces instantly better results without having to touch anything. That's a direct model import. Comparing that to twin motion, there's a lot of work that needs to be done here. So straight away, I'm getting really good feelings about D5. Even the cloud movements in the background are just a nice little touch. Now, to be fair to Twin Motion, this isn't set to Path Tracer yet, so let's change it over to Path Tracer, load high, and you'll see it takes a few seconds to really load the Path Tracer scene. At the same time, I'll adjust the north point so that we're casting similar shadows. Even in Path Tracer mode and casting similar shadows, I still think D5 Render has a better out of the box resolution than almost any other software I've seen, to be honest with you. Now, here's the difference. Every time I zoom in and out in Twin Motion, you see the Path Tracer doing its thing, pixelating, and then coming into focus. D5 doesn't have that issue with its brand new feature update. So in the menu under preferences and rendering, you can turn on real time path tracing. It's basically absolutely seamless. If I fly in and fly out, you'll see nothing really changes in the scene. It's near perfect every single millisecond of the frame rate that I'm moving through. The downside of this is the computer has to work a lot harder. When D5 render is running, the computer is louder. When twin motion is running, the computer is quieter. So there is that drawback in a sense. But for me personally, I'd rather have the louder computer running the perfect scenes, making sure everything's right and having to wait seconds and seconds for it to update constantly and for me to know that my render's looking good. Next on the hit list is materials and objects. Twin motion is super simple, come in. And in the latest update, they have 3D grass, which was completely missed for a long time. So even if I was to add my 3D grass, and change a few materials by literally dragging and dropping, you'll see the path tracer is now really struggling and even my computer is starting to struggle because of the real time grass. My computer shouldn't struggle. It's incredibly powerful. It's running the top end specs, but this real time 3D grass and twin motion just isn't fine tuned yet to work properly. So personally, I still don't like using it. You'll see as soon as I take it off, the computer works absolutely fine and we have no issues. The drag and drop of the materials, super easy, super seamless, no issues whatsoever. D5 works in the exact same way. You come across the assets and a new pop-up window emerges. What you'll notice is the asset library in D5 is gigantic compared to Twinmotion. Now yes, Twinmotion has Sketchfab and Megascans built in, but it just doesn't compare. This library is phenomenal. So if I just simply search glass, same system applies. Pick your glass, pick where you want it to go. Everything updates exactly the same as Twin Motion. So from a materials editor, it's very much like for like. However, where D5 then takes it to the next level is the scatter feature. Now I can go ahead and put in 3D glass like I can in Twin Motion. And first of all, it won't slow the computer down. So let's do that as an experiment. I select my basic grass, I select my grass cover, and in seconds it creates realistic grass. Now this is perfect, well and good, no issues. Now what I prefer to do in D5 instead is go to the scatter landscape tool and select 
a grass profile in the scatter tool. So then I can literally click on the meadows, for example, select my grass cover down the bottom, create my scatter, and in seconds it will create beautiful 3D textured grass absolutely everywhere. What makes life even easier is the scatter tool in D5 for backgrounds. So I can select my mountain forest, select the grass in the background, create, wait literally two seconds and have an entire forest generated in the background. So now in less than a dozen clicks, I've gone from a basic generic render to this that looks super impressive compared to this into in motion that still looks relatively generic. Now I can absolutely use the scatter tool in the background, but it's going to crash my computer because the scatter generation in twin motion just doesn't have that same level of detail applied. Now spending 10 seconds on each software is not really a fair comparison. What about spending hours on each actually going through and meticulously adding materials, trees, plants, and different scenes? What would it look like then? Let's start with twin motion. So this is the same model with a lot more time, energy, and care spent on it. It's converted from a real-time rendering to a path tracer because it was originally rendered on the Mac Studio, which doesn't have path tracing, you know, so the PC now takes over as the rendering machine. The model itself, is generally quite good. All of the plants are purchased additional assets through Globe Plants, and they're quite expensive, to be honest with you. They're not generic items. They're all relatively specific to the climate and everything. The vehicle, the people, everything else was directly from Twin Motion. The grass was painted in effects, so I didn't have to use the 3D grass, as was the HDRI. It was directly from Twin Motion itself. Rendered out, it looks something like this. Now, generally, that's quite a nice render. I spent a good three, four hours on this design, making it perfect, fine tuning, working it just the way I like. And I know Twin Motion relatively well. So overall, I got a decently good example render. But now we take a look at D5 render, and it is miles apart. This image isn't even rendered out. This is in the software, without any of these crazy AI features that I'm gonna to get to in a little minute. This is literally straight from the software. No HDRI sky applied, Geo sky applied, and it looks phenomenal. The final render looks like this. Now, I'm obviously being very biased here because I'm proud of my work in D5. I'm also very proud of my work in Twin Motion. So let's compare the pair. A side-by-side -side render analysis just tells you the full story. Twin Motion is able to produce really nice renders very quickly. The D5 render takes it to the absolute next level. All of the plants in D5 render straight from the software. The vehicle straight from the software. All of the other assets straight from the software. I didn't have to spend a single cent outside of what I already use for D5. Whereas Twin Motion to get these creepers and vines and grass trees, I have to go out and purchase them myself. You'll notice the reflections in the glass aren't perfect whereas the reflections in the glass on D5 are stunning. The grass in the foreground is chalk and cheese. The grass in twin motion is relatively fake, blurred out, scattered, just not something that you look at and go, oh, that's a real photo. Whereas the grass in D5 is quite nice. If I were to take a photo of real grass, it'd be hard to compare the pair. So for me straight away, D5 is looking like a significantly better choice. What I loved about D5 was the quirky little additions, like for example, with the Ferrari right here in the background, I can turn the lights on and off. I can't do that in twin motion. I don't have the ability. I can make the wheel spin. I can add a driver. I can take the driver out. All sorts of extra little quirky things I can do here. And if I wanted a red Ferrari, I just go into color, select red, and it automatically generates a red Ferrari. Now, I didn't export a red Ferrari because I wanted a white and a white car. Otherwise, I would have had a red Ferrari. So from a rendering software, D5 takes the cake easy. But here's where it goes the absolute next level. Twinmotion has been pumping out generic updates for the last few years. And yes, they've been nice and I've really appreciated them. But D5's updates are huge leaps, especially in the AI space. So let's have a quick look at the AI features. If I jump across to our HDRI scene and up the top, you'll see Studio. We have a D5 curated preset series of endless lighting configurations. If you wanted a nighttime scene, you download it, you double click it, you give it about 10 seconds and it automatically changes your entire scene perfectly. Now, Twin Motion just 
doesn't have that yet. Whereas D5's got hundreds and hundreds of options. If you wanted to take the nighttime rendering to the next level, let's have a look at this one by one example. In this one by one example, I've got the Milky Way in the background and I can rotate it, adjust it however I see fit. If I wanted a full Milky Way overpowering the absolute scene, I could have that. And all I need to do is drag a few sliders around. This particular nighttime scene is literally the geo sky. So I adjust it back to daytime and in seconds it goes to a perfect daytime render. Now you try that in twin motion and it's just not the same unfortunately. Then there's atmosphere match, completely AI based. So if I hit atmosphere matched, I can upload a reference image. It doesn't matter what that reference image is, just pick something. I pick something with a sunset glow. You know, it's completely different to what this image looks like. So I really want to push the boundaries of the AI. I hit snap current view. It takes a little picture and then start generating. I didn't cut that scene at all. Literally in seconds, it's able to get the apply button ready for you. So you hit apply and it will start migrating across the data. This does take about 10 seconds, but once it's done, you'll see that golden glow completely overpowers the scene and becomes very similar to my reference image. All I'd have to do then is go through, adjust my trees to make them autumn leaves rather than a deep green. And I'd have a render very similar to my reference image in a matter of seconds, instead of wasting hours trying to fine tune presets. And that's not at all where we stop. Up the top, we have AI post processing. Once you've rendered out your first image, you can select that image to start your AI tasks. Now I've gone ahead and tested this to make sure I'm genuinely telling you guys the truth. Despite D5 paying me for this video, I really wanna give you my honest impressions. So first of all, you have the default image that it exported. Beautiful, looks really good. One of our first tools down the bottom is in painting and allows you to adjust sky, water, vegetation, or even characters. And that's what I did for my first render example. I changed the sky to a little bit more moody, a little bit more dark cloud. So by using the slider back and forward, we can see the difference. Now, I'll be completely honest with you here. There's a few bits and pieces that aren't perfect. The top of my roof is completely changed if we put a side by side in. It's missed a little bit of the mountains in the background. It looks like the clouds aren't completely over it. And then again in the background here, it also doesn't change the foreground colors. So I don't think this exact example is perfect, but it is a very easy way to change your skies in a matter of seconds. If we went to in painting, went to sky, you'd see all the different options. Now D5 automatically highlights that sky so you don't have to do anything. And I guess if I spent a little bit more time fine tuning the externals, I wouldn't have those problems. You can do similar things for the vegetation, so if I wanted to change the grass in the foreground, let's say I wanted a flower garden, I'd select my vegetation at the front, I'd select my grass, and then I'd press in painting. Now this process in itself will take a good 60 seconds, 90 seconds. It's not that quick. What D5 tells me is it's based on your internet speed more so than your computer processing power. And my internet speed's only 100 megabytes a second, so it's not the be all end all. And when you're comparing it to exporting another render, it's very similar. We're talking 6K exports, 60 to 90 seconds for an image is absolutely awesome. I think I'm just being a little bit impatient if I'm being honest. While we wait for that one to render and export, I'll showcase a different in-paint. Now I used in-painting and change the vegetation in the background is all the foliage that was exported in D5. But when I go through, it updates all of my trees and these trees look photorealistic near perfect. It also blends so seamlessly with the mountain background as well. So I think these trees just take it to the absolute next level. Let's jump back to the render we did a second ago in painting where we transferred a landscaping style. So the before is obviously just grass everywhere. Seconds later, we have beautiful gardens in our foreground and our background. So the in-painting feature in D5 is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of my favorite features in improving our renders. But if we wanna take it to the next level, we also have AI style transfer. So if we select AI style transfer, we have a few different options to select from, stylized or realistic. Stylized, we can have different architectural styles. For example, a white model that glows. Realistic, we can have a series of different nighttime, daytime, winter scenes, whatever we're looking for, or we can even add our own reference image. 
which is similar to AI Atmosphere Match, but takes it to another level. We'll test that out in a second. But let's have a look. If we go into our realistic setting and pick any of these, doesn't matter which one, export it out, have a look at before and after. So our before is of course our image exported. Our after is a completely different image. It does have a little bit of an AI effect to it. Some of the lines aren't perfectly clean. Some things are a bit, you know, questionable, but as a first glance or as a low sized image, this is quite nice to present and utilize. You'll notice that the side reference buildings have been completely changed and adjusted. So we had brick, for example, now we have timber. We had blue, now we have black. And in the middle, it's taken our building to the next level. The reflections on our glass are so much better. The wood texture on our garage is absolutely phenomenal. The concrete planter boxes look a little bit more concrete now. And it's even adjusted all of my grass and vegetation in the foreground and background. We've seen what it can do with the AI visualizer. Now let's see what it can do with realistic style transfer from a reference image. Let's upload that exact same reference image and hit AI style transfer. Now, this is our AI style transfer using our reference image. I'll bring up the reference image as screenshot here on the side. It did a decent job, but it also completely butchered our project. So it's taken the colors, the themes, the styles and implemented it into the design. So instead of just changing the atmosphere like the AI atmosphere does, it tries to actually completely redesign the project for you. With AI, there's always glitches, there's always bits and pieces, like example, there's glass in our garage, there's misalignment, there's new elements that we just didn't need there at all, but it's trying to create an image from absolutely nothing. And the first attempt, not bad, needs a little bit more work for this feature though. We can also layer all of these AI effects one on top of each other to get an awesome image. So this is the image exported out of D5. Looks great. After that, we take out the background trees and add these beautiful pine trees. Looks awesome. Then to top it all off, we add the landscaping at the very front, takes it to the next level. To finish it off, we can come across to the AI enhancer, select a few elements. So for example, our garage, I think the texture just isn't perfect. All of the black and the metal, and of course our glass. Everything else in the scene so far, I'm quite happy with. Let's see what it can do. Finally, to layer all of the AI features one on top of each other and have a look at our final image. We of course have the background updated, the foreground updated, and now our materials fine tuned. So let's have a slow reveal. You'll start to see over our garage, the texture is a little bit more appropriate to the scene now. It has more wood grains. It is more charred as it's meant to be. The glass is a little bit more reflective while also picking up the hues and the colors of the scene. If I go all the way through that image, there might not be an absolutely massive change, but that's perfect. I don't want it to go ahead and destroy my image. I want it to fine tune it. I want it to make it better. I wanted to make it the absolute best it can be. Now let's compare the pair, the finished product, the creme de la creme. On the left hand side, we have the original export through D5 render. Absolutely stunning and flawless in about two hours worth of work. And then we layer on top of that another 15 minutes. I'm probably being generous, maybe 10 minutes of AI processing and our image looks a hundred times better. I didn't have to spend hours meticulously planting all these plants, adjusting the sizing so it looks realistic. I didn't have to adjust the depth, the field, the shading, the shadows, nothing. AI did it all for me. Similarly, the background trees, photorealistic, absolutely perfect. As is even the mountain in the background. I don't know about you guys, but the verdict is pretty clear for me. D5 render over twin motion any day of the week. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I will see you next week.